Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to another Jane Austen July video. Today we're going to be talking about why I keep rereading Pride and Prejudice. So, I'm currently rereading Pride and Prejudice, and this is the tenth time, at least, that I've read Pride and Prejudice. I'm pretty sure I've read it more than ten times, but I've definitely read it ten times. Like, this is definitely at least the tenth time I've read Pride and Prejudice. The reason why I'm not quite certain about that is because I definitely reread it as a teenager, and I don't know how many times I reread it before I started, like, tracking my um, reading on Goodreads, which I probably started in my early twenties, I think. Um, I also studied Pride and Prejudice at school for A-level, um, and usually when I studied a book at school or at university, I reread it lots of times, and I don't really know how many times. Um, so I've at least read Pride and Prejudice 10 times, but I reckon I've probably read it 11 or 12 times. I feel like I've missed out a few of my rereads on Goodreads. But regardless, I have reread Pride and Prejudice a lot, and I am sure that I will continue to reread Pride and Prejudice a lot throughout the rest of my life. I feel like Pride and Prejudice is one of those books I will just reread probably every year, at least every couple of years, forever. So I thought today I would talk about why. Um, partly this is a video about why I love Pride and Prejudice, but partly this is a video about why I keep rereading Pride and Prejudice. So I came up with 10 reasons why I keep rereading Pride and Prejudice, some of which are just reasons why I love the book and then some of them are like specifically reasons why I really love rereading it. So today I have a list of 10 reasons why I keep rereading Pride and Prejudice, you know, 10 reasons for at least 10 readings in my life of Pride and Prejudice. I love this book hugely and I thought this might be an interesting video. So let's get into my list. I should say that this video will be full of spoilers for Pride and Prejudice, so if you haven't read Pride and Prejudice, maybe this isn't one for you. So the first reason why I love Pride and Prejudice and why I love rereading Pride and Prejudice is that it is a really, really wonderful love story. Pride and Prejudice is a lot more than a love story, as I go on to talk about, but I do feel like the love story in Pride and Prejudice is fantastic and I do feel like every time I read it I love the love story and I like notice new intricacies and subtleties in the character development and the characterization and how that impacts the love story and every time I read it it brings me such joy because as a love story I just really 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 enjoy it and there are a few things that make me smile quite as much as the love story in Pride and Prejudice and as much as the literary flirting between Elizabeth and Darcy even when she doesn't realize they're flirting it is excellent. The second reason why I love Pride and Prejudice and why I love rereading Pride and Prejudice is that Pride and Prejudice is a fantastic work of social criticism. And this is the other thing about Pride and Prejudice that I love so much, because I feel like Jane Austen, in all her books, but especially in Pride and Prejudice, really like joins together that wonderful love story with some fantastic things that she has to say about society at the time when she was writing. Things about money, about class, about marriage, about the position of women. Things about how people judge and misjudge each other um, and how class and money comes into that. And there's just so many interesting bits of social criticism in Pride and Prejudice that I love. And I also feel like quite a lot of those elements of social criticism can be quite subtle in Jane Austen's work, which is one of the reasons why I love rereading Pride and Prejudice, because I do feel like I spot different little bits of social criticism and different kind of elements um, and clues towards characters' class um, and financial circumstances and how that might impact um, them as a character and how they interact with the world around them. I feel like I spot new things about that all the time. You know, I feel like when you first read Pride and Prejudice, in your head, Mr. Darcy and Mr. Bingley are of the same class, but they're not of the same class. Um, and rereading Pride and Prejudice and spotting the hints towards the very different social positions of Mr. Bingley and Mr. Darcy, um, and how Mr. Darcy is very much kind of old money and Mr. Bingley's money is much newer, and how that means the Bingley's kind of social position is much more fragile. Like, that's just the kind of stuff that you're not really... I think is aware of on a first read, or certainly I wasn't, but you know, I did read it first when I was a teenager. But I love rereading Pride and Prejudice for like spotting um, and taking note of all of the kind of interesting bits of social criticism and all the kind of intricacies that she weaves into her book. The third reason why I love rereading Pride and Prejudice is the humour. I find Jane Austen absolutely hilarious. Jane Austen has entirely my sense of humour. I find her books laugh out loud funny, like I'm there sat reading my book or listening to my audiobook, like grinning because it's so hilarious. I find her hysterical. Um, and I feel like Pride and Prejudice is her funniest book. 
Mansell Park is my second favourite Jane Austen. I love Mansell Park, but Mansell Park is not as funny as Pride and Prejudice by quite a long way. And I feel like Pride and Prejudice just is the funniest. Like, it is hilarious. There are so many characters who I find very, very entertaining. Laughing at Caroline Bingley and Mr. Collins is exceptionally fun. I really enjoy all of Elizabeth Bennet's witty remarks. Even when I am mildly distressed by the clear breakdown in marital relations between Mr. and Mrs. Bennet, I do find their conversations very funny. And I feel like the humour in Pride and Prejudice makes it a joy to reread because I do just find it as funny on every reread and I do just love enjoying and experiencing that humour again. The fourth reason why I love Pride and Prejudice is the writing. I feel like Pride and Prejudice is wonderfully written. I love Jane Austen's writing style. I love the way she uses like free and direct discourse to like slip kind of into the voices and the minds of the different characters that she's talking about. I love how you get to see like a little bit into Mr. Darcy's head as well as into Elizabeth's head. I love her well-written and interesting dialogue. I love, as I've already mentioned, her little bits of Regency flirting. I really enjoy the wittier sides of her prose as well as all of the humour of her characters and I feel like Pride and Prejudice is so well written um, and for me I would say possibly technically her best. Um, like I feel like the writing in Pride and Prejudice is at its best. Um, I feel like there is nothing that I would change about Pride and Prejudice whereas love sense and sensibility as I do I feel like the pacing isn't right and there are things that I would change. Um, as an editor were editing Jane Austen I would get her to develop Edward Ferris as a character. Anyway, but there's nothing I would change about Pride and Prejudice. Like, I just, I just feel like it's perfect. And I really enjoy rereading it because the writing itself is just a joy to read. Another thing that I very much love about Pride and Prejudice, um, and another reason why I love rereading Pride and Prejudice, is because of the characters within Pride and Prejudice. I know I have already mentioned a few in passing, but I feel like the cast of Pride and Prejudice. The characters within that novel are just so fantastic um, and so rich and interesting and so entertaining. I love Elizabeth Bennett as a character. I think she's fascinating. I really love Mr. Darcy and his character development, his character arc. I really enjoy reading about all the Bennett sisters and their differences. I like the kind of subtle intricacies and social criticism within the character of Charlotte Lucas. I even love to read about Caroline Bingley and Mr. Collins because though they are frustrating, I find them so interesting. Lady Catherine de Bourgh is fantastic. Um, I love the gardeners. Mr. and Mrs. Bennet are excellent. I feel like every character in Pride and Prejudice is so interesting to me. Um, and one of the reasons why I love rereading Pride and Prejudice um, is because I know all these characters really well. And that makes it just a joy to reread. But also, as well as knowing all these characters really well, there are also quite a lot of them. And one thing I really like to do that I've started doing in recent years is every time I reread Pride and Prejudice, I'm like focusing on a different character. And um, so I did this for a couple of videos I've made in the past. Um, a few years ago I made a video called Let's Talk About Mr. Collins where I dissected Mr. Collins as a character um, and I reread Pride and Prejudice shortly before making that video and I basically reread Pride and Prejudice just looking out for Mr. Collins just like waiting for him to appear taking note of his scenes like thinking about the way he behaves and I just did a reread of Pride and Prejudice that was like just focused on Mr. Collins and then I did the same um, the next year um, with Caroline Bingley and then made a video about Caroline Bingley um, and there's just something really fun and weird and delightful about rereading a book like just focusing on one character just to like really think hard about what they do and that's not something I usually do when I'm reading and rereading books um but that's something that I feel like I can do with Pride and Prejudice because I know it so well um but also it's something that is really fun to do because I do feel like all of Austin's characters are really interestingly drawn and have a lot of complexities that you don't necessarily like notice when you're paying attention to all of the characters at once so that is definitely one thing that i really really love about rereading pride and prejudice on a kind of related note but a bit more general um the sixth reason why i love rereading pride and prejudice is because every time i read pride and prejudice again i do spot new things even though i've read it 10 times there'll be a new sentence where i'm like oh i haven't thought about that in that way before or there'll be a character that i'm focusing on that suddenly um i'm interpreting in a new way or thinking about in a new way every time i reread pride and prejudice i feel like i spot new things even though i've read it a lot and that for me is really one of the most rewarding things about rereading books um is spotting new things that you maybe didn't notice the first time or thinking about things in a slightly different way thinking about a character from a slightly different perspective um kind of looking out for the things that um you might not have thought of on your first read that is something i really love about rereading um especially about rereading austin and especially about rereading pride and prejudice one of my favorite non-fiction books about jane austen um is a book by john mullen called what matters in jane austen where he talks about 20 things which 
are like patterns throughout Jane Austen, how they operate um, or what significance these things might have in all of her different books. Um, and I remember rereading Pride and Prejudice for the first time after I'd read that book um, and spotting like lots of different patterns and threads and things that I hadn't really thought about before um, and this kind of significance of that. Especially because, as I have already said in this video, Jane Austen is very subtle um, and a lot of the clever stuff she does is quite subtle and I really just love rereading Pride and Prejudice and spotting something new every time. At number seven, just looking down at my list, I wrote something very vague for this point, um, but we'll take it, we'll take it, um, and that is the utter joy that this book brings me. I feel like there are a few books that make me quite so happy as Pride and Prejudice. I feel like it's such a joyous book in so many ways and obviously there are you know some more serious themes as I've spoken about and there are some moments of sadness but I feel like this book just makes me feel so happy um and I feel like it is a very like warm and comforting book in that way something about this book makes me so happy and I think it's that combination of um the happy ending and the great love story with wonderful humor and wit throughout um and the kind of feeling that I've read this book so many times I know it's gonna be fine in the end um, and that kind of just means that this book is just such a joy to read um, and that is something that is really lovely especially because I feel like some of the other books that I really love um, have more melancholy within them than Pride and Prejudice has um, and I just really really enjoy the sheer joy that Pride and Prejudice gives me. I feel like few books make me laugh as much as Pride and Prejudice and few books make me smile as much as Pride and Prejudice. The eighth reason why I love rereading Pride and Prejudice is because I love listening to Pride and Prejudice on audiobook. There is a wonderful audiobook of Pride and Prejudice on Audible which is narrated by Rosamund Pike which I've listened to at least four times, possibly five, and I love that audiobook very very much um, and I really really like rereading on audiobook in general because I feel like it's a nice way to have a slightly different experience of a book um, that you've read before but also I really love rereading Jane Austen on audiobook because of her wit um, and because her books work very well read aloud you know I think a lot of 19th century authors when they were writing they were writing um, on the understanding that some people would hear their books read aloud to them because that was very common practice in the 19th century and um, so I feel like a lot of 19th century authors work really well read aloud and I love listening to Pride and Prejudice on audiobook and because I really like this Rosamund Pike audiobook and I've listened to it lots of times I feel like now in my head her voices for the characters are my voices for the characters when I'm reading it physically and I just find that audiobook like a real joy to read and it's a really nice audiobook where I've listened to it lots of times so it's very familiar to me it's a good audiobook to go to sleep to it's a good audiobook to like listen to in the background that audiobook has come to be like really pivotal to my rereads of Pride and Prejudice so that's another thing that I really enjoy about rereading Pride and Prejudice is listening to it on audiobook. The ninth reason why I think I really love rereading Pride and Prejudice is because I feel like there is great comfort in rereading a book that you know and love and especially a book that you know really well which means that okay I've read Pride and Prejudice 10 times you might think that is an awful lot of times to have read one book but I feel like the more I reread Pride and Prejudice the more I love rereading it because it becomes like even more of a comfort to me um, and even more of like just a lovely familiar experience because I know this book so well so it's you know it's just really nice to reread because I know what's round the corner I know what's round every page I know what sentence is going to come next because I just know it back front um, and that is really lovely um, and that makes for a really really nice relaxing rereading experience um, and that's something that I just thoroughly thoroughly enjoy when we're reading a favourite book and especially um, when we're reading Pride and Prejudice. But finally the tenth reason why I keep rereading Pride and Prejudice um, which is surprisingly significant is that Pride and Prejudice is the shortest of my favourite books. So Pride and Prejudice is not my favourite book of all time. Um, but if I think about my favourite books of all time, Pride and Prejudice is the shortest by a fairly significant way. I just went to my bookshelves and I pulled off a stack of some of my favourite classics of all time, which are some of my favourite books of all time. Um, and I thought I would show you the stack um, so that you can compare the size of Pride and Prejudice to the size of a lot of the rest of them. Um, and obviously it is harder to compare because I don't have um, Pride and Prejudice in Penguin Classics as I do with the rest of them. But Pride and Prejudice is quite a 
good chunk shorter than most of the rest of my favourite novels. My favourite novel of all time is Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens and it just it just takes a lot longer to reread Our Mutual Friend than it does to reread Pride and Prejudice so it's just a lot easier to reread Pride and Prejudice. Even with the two other of my like most favourite books of all time which are slightly shorter, North and South and uh, Wuthering Heights, um, still both of them are quite a bit longer than Pride and Prejudice. So the audiobooks I have of these books on Audible, Pride and Prejudice is 12 hours, um, Wuthering Heights is 14 hours and North and South is 18 hours. Um, and Wuthering Heights is actually my other most reread book of all time. I've reread Wuthering Heights um, probably about 10 times as well, the same as Pride and Prejudice, um, because they are the shortest of my favourite books of all time. Um, and, you know, I would really love to reread Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens every year, but it would just take me an awful lot longer than rereading Pride and Prejudice every year. And that really is one of the reasons why I love rereading it, because it is like the most time efficient way for me to get that like sheer joy of rereading one of my favourite books of all time. The most efficient one is Pride and Prejudice. Saying that, I have read Our Mutual Friend a lot of times. I think I've read it six or seven times, um, and I would like to reread it again soon. But it just does take up rather a lot more time than rereading Pride and Prejudice. So those are ten reasons why I love rereading Pride and Prejudice and why I have reread it ten times or more. Please do let me know down in the comments if you like Pride and Prejudice. Have you read it? Have you read it more than once? How many times have you read Pride and Prejudice? And that's all for now. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.